This video is rated T or Tickle Me Pink. Would you believe me if I told you there was an item in Escape from Tarkov that you kept every single time you died, could stop all of your bleeds instantly, could heal you to full health instantly, could make you carry twice as much, could stop you from dehydrating as well as stop you from starving, or make it so you could run across the map in a single sprint? How about hearing enemies from further away? You can also utilize this item to give you elite skills as well as the perks that come with that. Some of these elite perks include Berserk Mode, which you've probably never heard of before. I'm not shitting you. When you drop to low health, you'll get a massive speed boost and a massive damage reduction. It exists in the game, and 99% of the player base doesn't even know about it. I utilize all these things. It's because I have 9,000 hours in Escape from Tarkov. I have one of the highest KDs in the standard game. I'm level 56 right now, and I had the highest KD in the top 100 arena. Do I think any of those stats are cool? Not really. I live on a beach in Hawaii and I'm still scared to go outside. I just play a lot of fucking Tarkov. My name is Tickle Me Pink. Welcome to the channel. Now, I'm not talking about an ancient staff. We're not going to be running around casting ice barrage on anyone. I'm actually talking about the injector's case. So if you don't know, the injector's case is a case in Escape from Tarkov that you can actually put in your container. It's a one by one. It holds nine cells, and in these cells, you can put injectable medications. Now, there is a massive plethora of injectable medicine in the game, but I'm going to go ahead and break them down into several different categories that will make it so you survive more in your raids, win more engagements, and get more loot out of your raids. As a bonus for making it to the end of the video, I'll show you guys how you can go ahead and carry way more loot out of the raid, and I'm not talking about a mule. It's going to cost you significantly less and work significantly better and i'll also show you exactly how i like to build out my injectors case let's hop into this video i just want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video hello fresh before we go any farther i actually signed a contract with them where i have boxes to give out to you guys if you've never had hello fresh and you live in the u.s i can get you guys free food this week just go ahead and shoot me a message on discord tell me you're interested in the hello fresh deal i also get paid when i give you guys free groceries so go ahead and get in contact with me you're doing me a favor i'm doing you a favor let's continue with the video so we have a few different categories here, and we're just going to go through them in this order. We have our bleed stopping medication. We have our insta heal medication. We're going to have a miscellaneous category to show you guys how to unlock things like berserk mode, as well as stop poison. Go ahead and stop you from starving or dehydrating in raid. We have medication for endurance, and we have medication for weight. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the bleed stopping category of these medications. These are super simple to use. If you're going to pick up one of these medications used, this will save you the most. So in this category, we have three primary bleed stoppers. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about these in order of worst to best. Now, why would we do that? Why would we not just talk about the best ones? Because the best ones can cost you a lot if you're constantly just buying them. And you can probably sustain your injector case by just going ahead and looting these three when you find them. And they all cover the main primary base, which is stopping you from bleeding. On a side note, something that will really help you get a lot of value out of this is make sure you keep your bleed stopper category stims in the same spot in your injector case, whether that's like the top right, the top left, wherever. As soon as you pop it open, you know exactly where it's at. You don't have to sift through it. Additionally, this is probably a no brainer, but you're using this instances where you have like two heavy bleeds and two light bleeds or three heavy bleeds and instances where you need to stop the bleed instantly or you're going to bleed out. It could even just be one heavy bleed, one light bleed, but you're about to lose your thorax. Popping this can save you in that instance. The first one we're going to talk about is Zagusin. So you'll automatically recognize it based off the name, as well as the fact that it's like a pinkish purple crayon. There's really no other ones that look like it. And this is immediately going to stop all of your light bleeds and all of your heavy bleeds. And it'll also prevent you from getting any more of these bleeds for 200 seconds. Now, the only downside of this is after 170 seconds, you're going to get 40 seconds of tremor. Now, that's not too bad. Probably after 170 seconds, you're out of an engagement already. That's almost three minutes, but that can't come back to bite you in the ass. If you don't know what tremors is when your character starts shaking and it makes it really hard to aim, this can be kind of a niche case, but it can get you killed. So just watch out for it if you're using Zagustin. The next bleed stopper I want to talk about is the AHF1-M stimulant. I just want to go ahead and say that all of these have the exact same use time. None of them take longer than others. This is going to go ahead and just stop and prevent bleeds once again and stop them for 120 seconds. Now you might say, well, that's worse than Zagustin because they can reopen 60 seconds earlier, but a lot of times it's not going to matter. And the reason this is better is just not going to have that tremor effect. It's not going to come back to bite you in the ass later on. The best bleed stopper that you can possibly get your hands on is Perfotorin. So it's like a blue looking stimulant. There's not really any stimulant that looks like it. And it's going to go ahead and stop all bleeds and close bleeds for 60 seconds. Now that might seem like a really big nerf from the AHF1 or the Zagusin. And the reason this is so nice is it also is gonna give you health regeneration. So you're gonna stop bleeds 
and get a health regeneration at the exact same time. This health regeneration is actually better than the Probital, which is a very common stim that a lot of people do use. It's one of the few stims that we actually see a lot of people in the Tarkov community actually utilize. This will give you 1.5 health regeneration a second, whereas the Probital will give you something like one health regeneration a second. As a bonus, it's also going to remove poison. So if you're going ahead and playing nighttime customs, woods, shoreline, factory, you might run into the cultists. They might shank you and they will poison you. There's not really many poison stoppers in the game but perfect one is going to stop your bleeds and prevent poison as a little hidden tip it actually removes radiation now there's no radiation in tarkov officially but there is radiation in tarkov arena and some of the kits actually come with perfect so once you've been sitting around for a long period of time the cleaners have came out you're going to see that you're going to get radiation poisoning on your character you can actually pop this to prevent this and then go ahead and wither the other enemy down with medication i've used this a few times in very high rated arena matches we're in the top 100 in the world and the other players just hiding so we just out heal them and knowing exactly what stims can do have won me rounds in arena so there's a little bonus tip for you is a direct follow-up to your bleed stoppers you're gonna want to know about health regeneration stimulants so health regeneration stimulants come in a wide array and the biggest thing you want to want to look for in them is how much they heal per second and for how many seconds they heal we're not going to go ahead and categorize these in a list of like best to worst or worst to best rather more so they each have a niche use and i'll explain when you should pop one in each situation but one thing you do need to know about health regeneration stimulants is the fact that they can be stacked so you can go ahead and pop one that heals let's say one health per second if you find yourself in a worse and worse more critical condition you can pop more snort as many crayons as you desire you'll see in this clip here i'm actually taking 57 damage per second and i start popping different stimulants first and foremost we pop our bleed stopper which has the health regeneration on it now mitigating all of that and going to 33 health regenerated per second, you need to remember that the health regenerated per second is for each limb. So it's not one health per second to your entire body. Each of your limbs, it's damage is getting that one health per second. So that's how you're getting radically different numbers. You also see the in-game category isn't necessarily based on seconds. You see it says 33 here, even though we popped a stimulant that gives us 1.5 health regeneration per second. If you multiply that by the amount of limbs we have, those numbers do not add up. And that's because that number on screen is not in seconds. We're going to go ahead and stack more and more health regeneration stimulants. But not only am I mitigating that 58 damage, but I'm actually superseding it and going to 480 gained. All right, the first one I want to talk about is the ETG, your green crayon, if you will. So the ETG is going to give you the most health regeneration per second out of a single stimulant. For 60 seconds, you're going to get 6.5 healing a second it's also going to give you a little bit of energy recovery which can be nice a lot of these stimulants tend to drain your energy atg does as well over the long term so it's going to rebuff that a little bit in the short term but another big thing the etg has going on for it is it removes concussion so a lot of times you're going to be in an instance where you want to pop this etg is because you get fried by a shotgun an smg a lot of your limbs are damaged in a lot of these instances you actually do get a concussion they probably do bounce around off your head they're doing a lot of flesh damage all over your body and a stray one catches your helmet so that'll go ahead and remove the ringing remove your vision being all fucked up and start healing you tremendously a lot of times if you're in a really bad situation like this pairing this with perfect torah you're gonna get an additional 1.5 seconds of healing regeneration you're gonna be at eight health generation removing your concussion and ready to turn back on the enemy the stimulant that gives the second most healing per second is actually a stimulant that no one ever uses and it's super strong and it's the adrenaline injector it's also incredibly cheap so for 60 seconds, you're going to go ahead and get four health per second, and that's to all limbs. You're also going to give a painkiller effect for 60 seconds. It's going to remove concussion. It's also going to buff your endurance, your strength, and your recoil control by 10. And we haven't really talked about skill stacking yet, but we'll get into that when we talk about combinations as well as some of the misc stimulants later on. Now, when it comes to adrenaline injector, I don't use it in my injector's case, but I actually use it in my chest rig. And the reason for that is it's one of the best instant pop painkillers in the game. For 60 seconds, you're going to go ahead and remove pain. You're getting health regeneration. You're healing up because someone engaged you first. You got to remember, like, you've already taken fire. You weren't expecting to take fire because if you were expecting to take fire, then, of course, you would have popped this painkiller before the fight, right? Many people like to use a golden star and ibuprofen in their case for that. And I touched base on why that is in my hideout video, which will be linked to the top right. If you haven't seen that, go watch it. A lot of information right there. But you're removing concussions, getting a painkiller effect, getting health regeneration, and you're getting a buff to your endurance, your strength, so you're moving faster, you're harder to hit, you're getting to cover faster, or you're pushing to them faster, and you're getting recoil control, which is helping you put 
accurate shots downrange and remove the threats. You can choose to use this in your injectors case. If you're running like really cheap kits, it might not be worth running an adrenaline in your chest rig. At the time I'm recording this, for only around 20k. However, like I said, if you're running something like a Mosin, an SVT, it's a very cheap kit. You might not be getting your money's worth out of this. A lot of times you might die without even popping it. But if you're running like medium to end game gear, I would recommend you strongly keep an adrenaline or a morphine in your chest rig. The only reason the morphine is nice is because it'll last a full five minutes of painkillers if you forget to re-up your painkiller. The next stimulant that gives the most healing per second is actually a stimulant called the PNB. Now it's a pretty rare stimulant and most people don't use it. It's because it's a double edged sword. Where that comes into play is for 40 seconds, you're gonna go ahead and get three health regeneration a second. However, after those 40 seconds, for the next 20 seconds, you're actually gonna have a tremor. So by the time you're healing back up to full and probably re-engaging, it's gonna throw your aim off. So this is really like air it with an ETG if you just need to heal as much as possible, as fast as possible in a short window. However, it can come back to bite you in the ass. So watch out for that. Personally, I stay away from the PNB for this reason. It's nice to get back in combat fast, but it's not worth getting tremors. The last stimulant in the health regeneration category is the propital. So propital is a pretty common stimulant. One of the only common stimulants you actually see used in the Escape from Targov community. It's a painkiller, but it's namely a health regenerator. So for 300 seconds, you're going to be getting a health regeneration of one per second to every single limb. This is like your slow burn. This is like you just want to fight. You have some black limbs. You're going to go ahead and pop it. Then go ahead and survival kit your limbs and it'll just naturally heal it up without you. Maybe you're in an engagement, you're not super wounded, but you want to kind of heal up over time and hold an angle. You'll pop this, maybe heal up your thorax and head. You'll go ahead and get back on the angle, maybe support your teammate. This is just your slow burner, health regeneration over time. It's not a whole lot to say about this. It's tried, it's true. I would always keep one of these in your injectors case. Before we hop into the endurance category as well as the miscellaneous category, we need to talk about stimulants that raise your skills how elite perks work with skills and what the hard cap is with these skills. So like I told you earlier, all stimulants can be combined together to go ahead and raise your skills to high levels. As high as level 60, that is the hard cap where your skills can no longer go any further. Now the hard cap in game without stimulants is actually 51. It's as high of a level as you can get by just training your skills up. And when you get level 51, you get elite perks. Almost every single skill in the game has an elite perk associated with it. Some of them are bugged and don't work, we're just going to talk about a couple today that it will actually influence your gameplay and things that I want to know about. And if you guys want a complete skill leveling guide, there's ways to actually target these skills and max them out fast, then let me know in the comments down below. We're going to be talking about elite strength, elite attention, elite endurance, and elite stress resistance. So will be the four big ones that we want to talk about today. So you need to get to at least level 51 to unlock the elite perk with a stimulant. Now, when you go ahead to your skills category, you're actually not going to see the elite perk unlocked, but it is working. As soon as you hit level 51 or above, you have that elite perk working. You can combine stimulants to get to this level. So use whatever level you have right now in these skills like strength, attention, and then look at exactly how much stat these various stims we're going to talk about give. And you can figure out which ones you need to pair for yourself to unlock that elite perk. And then we'll talk about the niche uses of when you're going to want to pop a stim to unlock that elite perk to help you tremendously. So we're going to talk about the easy to achieve ones first. The ones are a little bit easier to understand. And then we're going to talk about the vaguer ones later. But first and foremost is elite strength. So as soon as you hit level 51 strength, you're going to go ahead and unlock the perk that equipped weapons don't add weight to your character. So that means your pistol, the gun in your hands and the gun on your back are no longer going to weigh you down whatsoever. You can go ahead and see that in this clip on screen right now. Suddenly the six spear is not weighing anything once I pop stimulants and give above that 51 threshold. So you'll see this being very useful if you need to go ahead and haul a lot of loot out. Or for example, if you go ahead and buff up your strength before you get in combat, let's say you went ahead and popped an adrenaline. Now you pushed yourself up to elite strength. Your weapon is no longer weighing you down. You're actually moving faster. And if you're below that cutoff in your weight category on your character isn't yellow, you're actually making less noise now because you're underweight and you're training endurance. So situations where you want to actually get to elite strength in game might be if you really have to make a really dangerous push, you need to be mobile, you need to move fast, you need to be light. Go ahead and popping stims, getting to elite strength. You're going to want to make sure you drop your back row before a spell, but you're going to be as light as possible. The other case use is you just need to lug a lot of loot out of the map. Let's say you're at Shoreline Resort, you wiped a five-man squad, you are absolutely shloated and you just need to lug it across the map. Well, sure, popping a mule will make it easier to lug it. However, getting to elite strength will make you be able to carry even more. The next perk I want to talk about is endurance. Now, the only reason we're talking about this is it's fairly easy to get to elite endurance while popping stims. You don't even really have to think about doing it a lot of times when you're popping your endurance type stimulants. They'll just get you up there without even thinking about it. Once you go ahead and pass that 
51 soft cap with the skills you're going to unlock the elite perks and that's going to increase your stamina to 70 percent of the total capacity your hand endurance is going to be much stronger you'll be able to shoulder your rifle for much longer and breathing is going to be independent of energy so you can hold your breath infinitely the case uses are when you're going to want to have elite endurance are almost the exact same as strength so we're not going to go over those again the big one is just being able to hold your breath Popping an SJ6 and using something like an ACMX, like the 338 Lapua, it's very heavy, but going ahead and popping that so you can hold your breath, have higher arm stamina, and hold down an angle for your teammates can be big and something that will really help you out with sniping or using DMRs in Escape from Tarkov. It can also be useful when using MGs, but they're not great in the meta right now. I actually ranked every single weapon in the game in a tier list and explained why based on things like how accessible they are, how much they cost, and of course how powerful they are. If you want to see that i'll have that linked in the top right right now the next skill we need to talk about that a lot of people don't actually utilize at all is going ahead and getting elite attention through popping stimulants so what does elite attention do for us well elite attention is going to double your looting experience doesn't that sound phenomenal Don't you want to get more experience no this isn't the reason why you're going to be popping stimulants to get elite attention as soon as you hit level 51 for that soft cap with attention you're going to get the opportunity to instantly find an item in a container so Let's say you kill a looted enemy. You go ahead and tap his body and you see he has 500 experience. And if you don't know, that shows how much value is on that character based on flea market prices. So he probably has a loaded backpack. Let's say he has a loaded pilgrim backpack and you double click his backpack. You'll hear a little sound effect and it'll instantly search every single item in that backpack. At the time of recording this, you can actually cancel your search and retap until you get this automatic search bonus. This can help you tremendously in situations where you just want to go ahead and loot as fast as possible and get out of a situation and get into the next raid as fast as possible. The last elite skill I want you guys to be aware about that no one ever utilizes is stress resistance. So you can go ahead and pop stims to get to elite stress resistance. Once you're in a position where you can pop one of these stimulants that gives stress resistance skill, once you pass that little 51 soft cap, you're going to go ahead and get elite stress resistance. Now, when you have elite stress resistance, you will have access to berserk mode. Now, there isn't actually a lot of video footage of this actually being in the game. I don't have any from this wipe, so I do apologize. But the way this works, and you can find this in old videos on YouTube, is when you pop this, when you get to critical health, it's going to give you a massive, massive boost to your movement speed in game, your recoil control skill. And it's going to give you a massive reduction to your damage taken. It almost makes you temporarily unkillable. This is actually super overpowered, but not many people know about it. And you can actually utilize things like bleeding down to trigger this. So if let's say you have a lot of bleeds going per se, instead of popping something like a Zagusa and stopping all your bleeds, you go ahead and pop something like a P22 that gives 30 stress resistance and get ready to take advantage of that berserk mode and fly out and gun people down because they're going to hear you wounded you can even pair this with baiting a heal and suddenly you're going to be on the push and no one is going to expect it. I'll try and get a YouTube short or something out on this relatively soon as I should be able to get to elite stress resistance within the next week or so. Now, sorry, that category feels weird in a stimulants guide, but these next stimulants will help you achieve all these elite perks. And I'm just going to mention them now you know what they do when we get to each of the stimulants. All right, up next is the endurance stimulants. Now, all these have different case uses, kind of like the health regeneration stimulants. And we'll start with the most popular stimulant in this category that you probably know about, and that is the SJ6. So SJ6 is actually one of the worst stims in the endurance category, but everyone uses it. It's also super expensive. So after watching this, you're probably not going to use the SJ6 very much, but for 240 seconds, you're going to get an increased stamina pool, as well as the main reason you're popping this, which is stamina recovery rate of plus two a second. Think about the health regeneration stims, except for now your stamina is just going to go ahead and go up while you're running. So it'll deplete slower while you're sprinting, allowing you to sprint for longer and stop for less time. Historically, people have popped this to run to high value loot. Nowadays, with things like duffel bags and safes having insane loot, this can be good in situations where you just need to have a lot of stamina. Like when I was saying earlier, if you're sniping, maybe you're using a heavy MG, but you need to go ahead and get out of a situation, you need to go on a big flank, you need to make a flank very fast. That's a great case use to pop this SJ6 and do it all in a single sprint or hold your breath a single time if you're sniping, if you will. So if an SJ6 is trash and everyone uses it and it's expensive, what I recommend instead? Well, I recommend a trim it off. It's around half the price of an SJ6 and it's significantly better than an SJ6. So it gives you 180 seconds of painkiller. It removes concussion. It gives you plus 10 in endurance, strength, attention, and stress resistance. All the elite perks we were talking about, unlocking those for you. You don't really have to think about it. It's gonna increase your maximum stamina pool 
and it's going to go ahead and increase your stamina recovery rate by three a second instead of two a second. The only downside is this lasts for a minute less, but you're really popping these in short burst increments. I've very rarely ever had a situation where another 60 seconds would make any meaningful difference whatsoever. So save yourself money and get way more perks by going ahead and utilizing a trim at all instead of an SJ6. Well, let's say you really value that extra 60 seconds. Well, you're still wrong because there's another stimulant called the melodonin. This is a stim that I like to utilize on maps where I'm going to be running a lot. Maybe I want to go ahead and go to shoreline, go hit loot. Or I tend to give them a lot to viewers or people in the discord that I help out in Sherpa. If you're not on the Discord already, join the fucking Discord, man. I play with literally everyone in there. There's a bunch of sick cunts in there, and I look forward to meeting you. But the Melodonin will last for 15 minutes, 900 seconds, and it's going to go ahead and buff your strength and your endurance, strength by 10 and endurance by 20, and it's going to go ahead and buff your stamina recovery rate. Now, not by an insane amount, by 0.5 a second, but it's going to make those woods raids or shoreline raids, the maps where you're running around for long periods of time, going from quest item to quest item or loot to loot, significantly faster which is going to make you level faster have more fun and get more loot also just like the trim all, the melodonin is also very cheap it's around 25k at the time of recording this and i just want to thank you for watching this channel i'll keep giving you guys the best up-to-date information as possible because a lot of tarkov players are stuck in the past using obsolete rifles obsolete medicine and obsolete stimulants and i'm going to keep doing my best to give you guys the most up-to-date information possible all i ask in return is you guys smash the fucking dislike button and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below. Let's continue. These next two stimulants fit in between endurance stimulants as well as mule stimulants to help you carry gear out. I just want to give you guys that precipice. It's like right between previous endurance stimulants and the next stimulant category. A great stimulant I like to use is the SJ1. So it's going to go ahead and raise your endurance, your strength, and your stress resistance by 20. When I tend to use these is if I need to absolutely go Blitzkrieg and push a team, or if I'm just on the precipice where I need more strength levels to carry my gear out, this will push me to elite strength, or just raise your strength level so you're gaining stamina while walking so you're not stopping and crawling. Don't do that. Throw your backpack on the ground and then go ahead and move around so you don't get sniped. The amount of times I whack fucking turtles, they're carrying a million rubles is insane. Don't be that guy. But that is the perfect case use for the SJ-1 or its little brother, the L-1. It's almost identical to the SJ-1, except for it's only going to give a 10 endurance and it only lasts for two minutes. So the SJ-1 is the better case use in this scenario. Now we'll talk about the mule category. Now these last two are basically just baby mules. And if you're not familiar with the mule, the mule is like the go-to carry a lot of weight stimulant. Now this is just the most common one. There's actually hidden variations in the mule that cost significantly less and are better. But what does a meal do? So a meal gives you 15 minutes of increasing your weight limit by 50%. Sounds pretty good, right? Enabling you to go ahead and get stamina without stopping, enabling you to just carry much more. They usually end up popping these on maps like Shoreline, Reserve, Labs, where you've killed a ton of Chads and you just need to get all that gear out. Maybe somewhere you have like a tank battery, something extremely heavy. Well, what is the follow-up to that? It's actually Oblodos 2. Now, make sure you're not getting Oblodos 1. It's, that's just like a weird concoction. It's like hitting a fucking meth pipe in an alley and it can randomly kill you. Don't pop Oblodos 1. Use Oblodos 2. Now, Oblodos 2 is going to go ahead and give you 18 100 seconds so 30 minutes of endurance strength attention perception all plus 20 and increasing your weight limit by 45 percent so you're gonna go ahead and say 45 percent you know that sounds worse than 50 percent well when you go ahead and combine the fact that you're getting all the endurance and strength perks you're actually gonna be moving significantly faster you're not gonna feel quite as sluggish as you are with a mule and the oblos 2 right now only costs around 70,000 rubles where a mule is going for around 180,000 rubles you can buy almost three of these for the course of one mule now there used to be one giant downside stimulant and that was if you got shot with it at all you would basically instantly die you took like 200 increased damage they went ahead and removed that no one really knows that but that is why this stimulant is so good now the only issue is it's going to go ahead and give you minus one health per second to all your limbs you can easily go ahead and counteract that with something like a probatol we talked about earlier and with an oblos 2 and a probatol you're now looking at around 100k versus or almost 200k with popping the mule and you're going to move faster so you actually do end up being shot you're not going to be nearly as sluggish because of the added strength and endurance bonuses not to mention you're actually going to head and leveling your attention so you actually hear further as well that's why you should always use oblos 2 over mule 
All right, now I just have a couple of niche use stimulants. They'll really save your life when the time comes for it. Maybe once like a long PlayStation, you'll pop one of these, but they will save your life. The first one I want to talk about, and I always save my friends and people I'm playing with and chirping in Discord, that is the SJ-12. And SJ-12 is kind of a weird concoction that was added recently to the game. It's going to increase your perception by 30, lower your body temperature. But we're not popping for those reasons. The main reason we're actually popping is going to increase your energy recovery and your hydration recovery by 0 0.05 a second. So... This isn't going to go ahead and fill you, but it's going to stop you from starving to death. It's going to go ahead and stop you from being in that dehydrated state. So you're going to go ahead and get normal stamina regeneration. Get out of that raid and not fall down dead to starving to death. I've seen so many new players starve to death. And sometimes I'm in a situation where I've actually had to combine a lot of these different stimulants. A lot of them have, you know, deductions to hydration, to energy, or you go ahead, you're popping an ibuprofen or a golden star before combat. Those go ahead and reduce your hydration and energy. Even if you bring in a snack, sometimes you can find yourself in a long raid where you're suddenly out of hydration, out of energy, and you're not going to make it to extraction or you're going to starve to death. And the SJ-12 will actually save your life in these situations. The next miscellaneous stimulant is the P-22. So the P22 is actually going to give you 30 stress resistance for 60 seconds. That's the main reason you're going to want to pop it. It's going to go ahead to enable that berserk mode. And it's really its only niche use. Now, stress resistance is somewhat hard to level. So you can go ahead and pop something like a trimadol to get yourself 10 stress resistance right there. Or you can pop something like an SJ1 to give yourself 20 stress resistance. No matter what level your stress resistance is, then you will be able to enable berserk mode. The next one that I like to use all the time that is never used by anyone is the 3BTG. Now this one's can be kind of annoying to find on the flea market. You need to go ahead and put the dashes in, the parentheses of where they're at. It's always annoying. So I'd recommend just going ahead and putting it on your wish list so you don't have to consistently remember how to type it in. But the main reason I use this is for four minutes of plus 30 attention and perception. So this is when I've gone ahead and already mopped up a big squad and I want to loot them fast. If you remember with max attention, we can instantly loot bags. And that is the main reason we're popping this, but also the plus 30 perception. Now I'm going to be able to hear people coming to me before they hear me. So I can go ahead and stand up from that prone animation before they can even hear me and then go ahead and take an angle to eliminate them. So I don't run the risk of dying with all of that loot. It's also going to enable me to get in and out much faster. You don't want to sit in a situation where there's a lot of bodies down on the ground for a long period of time. You just run the risk of a player scab or a PMC rolling up and putting you out of your misery. Another really niche stimulant is the XTG-12. This is going to remove poison. However, if you're going to go ahead and be cultist hunting, I would just recommend you keep a perfect tour in your injectors case instead of this as you're going to be able to stop leads with that as well. The last very niche stimulant you need to know about is the SJ-9. So this is kind of like the big brother, the SJ-12. And the only reason you want to pop this is you're on a nighttime raid and you truly believe that the enemies are using thermal optics. So you're going to go ahead and pop that. It's going to go ahead and lower your body temperature by 7 degrees Celsius. And you're going to be practically invisible to thermal sites. You're going to look just like a cultist so they don't pop up on thermal optics whatsoever. It's kind of hard to gauge if your enemy has a thermal optic. But all you really need to know is in nighttime, even if you're wearing quad nods, it can be really hard to spot somebody, if, especially if you're in Foley you're not skylining you know your back is to a wall something like that you're in the shadows it can be really hard to see you so if people are spotting you almost instantly taking shots at you from a very far distance there's a really good chance that they have a thermal and popping this sj9 will effectively make you invisible and you can just push up on their position and eliminate them no one uses a stimulant and you're basically just going to snatch thermals from people like snatching twitch primes from fortnite kids all right now let me show you guys how i actually go ahead and set up my injectors case so from top to bottom, we have a propital for a slow burn. Let's say I'm in a situation where I am just lightly hurt. I, I want to keep moving, but I also want to heal, have my weapon shouldered. Maybe I think there's going to be an engagement up ahead. Maybe I lost my legs or some arms in combat, and I want to save myself some time while I'm survival king. I'll pop the propital beforehand, and I'll start healing all my limbs while I'm putting them back on. The ETGC, maybe I got tapped in the head. Maybe someone with piranha rounds was hiding in, I don't know, customs three-story in a dark shadow. That would never happen though, right? People doing setup, shooting piranhas in my legs. You need to pop an ETG, you need to get a lot of healing very fast. A lot of times I'll actually pop that ETG with the Perfator because we're gonna get the bleed stop and we're also gonna get the health regeneration. Outside of the injector's case, I don't actually have it on right now, but I always have an adrenaline is my quick pop. Once again, health regeneration, strength, endurance, recoil control. Let me get back on the attack, be the aggressor, not get caught in my pants down and not be sitting there medding. Oblodos 2 sitting right next to my Perfator because I always chain them together. You know, I need to carry all this loot out of reserve, out of shore, and I have a long ways to go. I'm going to go ahead and pop these two together so I can carry all of that loot out. And I'm also not worried about the missing health in any of my limbs. The SJ-12, I usually, I don't find myself popping this too often. Usually I remember to bring food and water. However, it can save your ass in a pinch. I just like to keep that in there. The 3BTG, once again, I've killed a lot of players. I need to loot them. I need to be able to hear enemies coming up. 
and I want to instantly loot all of my enemies' backpacks. Gonna go ahead and pop that for plus 30 attention. The Melodonin, we're gonna go ahead and play Shoreline, we're gonna go ahead and play Woods. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be running all over the place for a long period of time. I just wanna be a little bit faster, get in and out of that raid, and accomplish my goals as fast as possible. So we're popping the Melodonin. The Trimadol, you know, I need to hit a really quick flank. Maybe I'm using a heavy sniper rifle, I need to hold an angle, I'm using an MG, or maybe just a rifle, I need to hold down an angle. For some reason, I need a lot of stamina to either make a big combat move or I need a lot of arm stamina to hold down an angle because I think someone's going to push. That's when we're popping our trimadols. And lastly, the SJ1, we use this almost as like a baby mule. I usually have it actually over here because it's like a direct step down. Like, okay, this is my baby mule, but it's also in my endurance tab or I guess we'll call it the endurance row, if you will. But my health generation and bleed stop row. And we have kind of my niche use row right in the middle. So that's how I like to set mine up. I always keep them in the same spot. Now, you can go ahead and sub out like Perfdorf for Zagustin or an AHF1, like I said, but these are the best stimulants you can use in each of their categories. You can also go ahead and modify your injector case based on what map you're going to, and I strongly recommend that. Go ahead and arm yourself with weapons that are going to give you an advantage. It seems like a no-brainer, but you wouldn't take a shotgun with 6.5 Express Buckshot to woods, right? But I see people taking loud weapons with trace rounds to interchange and wondering why they get spotted instantly. Same thing can be said with what clothing you're wearing to a map, and I'll have videos on these as well, but go ahead and modify your injector's case to whatever niche use you need. So if you're going to Shoreline, maybe you're going to want more endurance sims. If you're going to go ahead and play a nighttime raid, well then maybe you're going to want to bring an extra poison stopper, right? Or you're going to want to bring an SJ9 just in case someone has a thermal. So go ahead and modify this based on what raids you're going to, but for just hitting most of the maps in a daytime format, this is going to be your bread and butter injectors case. It doesn't really leave any room to store injectors you find in it, but this is about upping your survival rate and getting you out with more loot. And if you want to go ahead and buy a second injectors case, then you can just to go ahead and store extra injectors you find. Let's say if you have like the black card on labs, for example, if you guys want to go ahead and see how I format this, maybe you forget. You just go ahead and type exclamation point injectors in my Twitch chat and I'll show you an image of my injectors case. Because sometimes I do forget about all these random crayons, even though they taste so good. And as a special thank you for making it all the way down this video, I really appreciate you guys. So I'm going to show you guys how to get an injector's case for free. All right, so what I want you guys to go ahead and do is get yourself either RBBK or RBVO. These are for reserved and these are marked rooms. Now, these go for around 800k each. They said free. Well, it's going to be free when you utilize this key. And you're going to go ahead and utilize 9 out of 10 uses out of this key. Because then you're going to turn it into a customs marked room key, which will make you even more money. So this will be free. And this will work even better if you don't have things like a dog tag case, a documents case, or a key bar already. Because if you do die with those items, then you can go ahead and just use them. The non found and raised status does not matter. But with nine uses, you're going to go ahead and put things like your lab's access cards in your gamma container, your docs cases in your gamma container. You can just sell those to therapists and comp back the key until you get that injector's case. So the time of recording this injector's case is almost a million rubles. There are some barters to get them for cheaper. So for example, if you want to do that, you can go ahead and utilize this therapist barter. It's at therapist level four though. So it is kind of far into it and it does still cost a good amount around 500 to 600K. If you'd use this method, you inevitably will get an injector's case probably within 15 door hits. So you might have to buy two separate keys. But once again, you are breaking even and getting an injector's case for free. I appreciate you guys all for watching this video. Go ahead and link this to your friends because go ahead and link this to your friends. There's a lot of information that'll make them a better player and a better squad mate for you, which just means more loot, more survives, and a better time on Tarkov. I'll see you guys all in the Discord. I look forward to meeting you guys as well as on the Twitch stream. Both links in the description down below. And if you haven't seen every single weapon in Escape from Tarkov ranked in a tier list, I'll have that on screen right now. Peace out, guys.